Hello and welcome to Second Chance Youth Ranch TV. I'm Kathy Dorsch and I have a very good friend to introduce you to today. I'm obviously not Perry Black and you would normally be seeing him in this time and place, but he's taking a break tonight and we're having a girls' night out. And I'm talking with my good friend, Rialana Reiner. Welcome to the show. Hi, Kathy. It's a pleasure to be here. We have never introduced you to our audience and I'm so excited. I've had the privilege of watching you from afar and so we're going to get to introduce you tonight. So let's start by just kind of telling everybody who you are. You are a young woman that is famous for the Riolana, Riolana consignment event. You got right? it. You got it. Yes. Okay. Um, yes, I started having um, children's consignment sales in my living room 25 years ago. So it was a long wow. time ago. <laughs> 25 years of consigning. Yes. People didn't even know what the word was back then. You're so. right. That you know, I remember first shopping your events with my daughter when my grandson was, I guess, an infant okay. or maybe two years old at the mm -hmm. earliest. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why wasn't this happening when we were mothers? Right. Why didn't this model happen when you know? Because children don't necessarily stay in the same outfit for very long or use the same toys for very long. Right. So well, let's let's get to know you first. Are you a native Arkansan? Are you a girl from around here? I actually am not. Oh. Um, I grew up in the military. Okay. So my dad was an infantry officer, um, wow. like combat, you know, fought yes. in the jungles of Vietnam. Oh my. And so I grew up in the military. And um, we had lived in Fayetteville for a period of, li of my life when my dad taught at nice. the university, taught ROTC. So they oh, always loved Arkansas. I bet. They hoped to come back. Uh, but I actually traveled by the time I was 18, we'd moved 22 times. Oh my and goodness. And I went to four different high schools. So that wow. lays a little bit of foundation of just, you know, I just had traveled a lot. Yeah. And, um, you know, it doesn't. It is the way I would want to raise my kids, so I changed yeah. that. But yeah. it is how I grew up. Wow! So you lived all over the world. We we did live. We, I lived in Germany, two different places in Germany when I was in high school. Amazing. And so I got to travel, you know, all over Europe yeah. um, for cheap. And so that nice. was, you know. But I think some. It also was kind of hard to be that age and yes. moving a lot, and yes. every year is different, and your friends are different. Mm -hmm. um, and so we actually moved back to the states. My senior year, we were in Leavenworth, Kansas. Wow. And I graduated early, halfway through my senior year and started at the University of Arkansas um, because my parents thought they were they had planned to retire okay and so I went to school at the University of Arkansas and I have um, been here most of that time although after I got married I moved to a couple of different states and then I landed back in Arkansas in the early 90s Wow well wow. Northwest Arkansas would be an amazing place to visit and live short term you would want to come back yes so uh, let me ask you this when you were growing up were your parents people of faith were you in church or was you know, a relationship with God or with the Lord, something far from you or near you? How did, how did that go growing up? Um, I would say that we were in and out of church some. Okay. Um, so a little bit of a church life, but yeah. it looked really different when we moved a lot of different places and went to lots right. of, so I would, I would say that probably faith was not really a part of my life, but I was in and out of churches. Moving a lot makes that hard because you're not really building community the way you would see a community in church life. Yeah, and you know, I would say my parents definitely found the Lord later in life, but they were gotcha. not strong believers either. And Ooh. so that sets the foundation, yes, you know, for a family. Does. It does. Well, wow. my husband was an army brat okay. and traveled all over the country. He didn't live overseas, but he has expressed how, you know, the, the military wife has a completely different kind mm -hmm. of stress level mm -hmm. raising the kids with dad away and the kids themselves having to always make new friends and mm -hmm. not just moving physically, but you're moving emotionally and learning all over again. That's tough. Yes. That's a, a family sacrifice. And I remember him actually greeting a woman, thanking her for her part of her family service. And he expressed that and tears just filled her eyes. Oh, yes. It's like just the relating that every member of the family is serving. That it's definitely true. I, I respect my mother a lot for the years that my dad went overseas and she was here, you know, right. by herself. And honestly, back in those days, um, I mean, they are, my, my family was, couple, my parents were best friends with these two other couples and the other husbands didn't come back from Vietnam. Oh. And so just the a thing, the thing that people walk through yes. in the military is just a very different experience. It is. So it's interesting that you are going to always have a military love in your oh, heart, definitely. aren't you? Goodness. Yes. Yes. So how then, we, at University of Arkansas, is that where you met your husband? It is, yes. Um, he had gone, he's actually 
actually from Arkansas. Um, he had okay. gone out of state to college, but had come back to Arkansas to do his graduate work. Nice. Um, I was finishing my undergraduate, and we met there, fell in love, and got married. Um, and so we actually ended up moving to Oklahoma. He was an engineer, and so he we lived in Oklahoma and then Texas wow. with his engineering job for a while. I, I don't think I knew that about you, that you yes. had moved around. Now, what were you studying in school? Well, it's kind of funny, actually. My degree was in exercise science, Kathy. Exercise so, yeah. science! You know, I... You go, girl. <laughs> I love it. There is a science to this. Well, I was actually like the first graduating class from the U of A in exercise science. I thought wow. I wanted to do like cardiac rehab or something with, you know, health and yeah. um, helping people, but um, I got married instead and there really weren't jobs out there much, you know, um, and so... I, Wow. I ended up, you know, I've never actually still ever had a business class in my life. I, I think God has quite a sense I of humor. Just, I find that hard <laughs> to believe, but you have been an amazing mom manager. I can, I can tell you that for sure. So you guys moved around and then you came back to Arkansas and decided to start your family here? Or well, were you having kids along the way? I or? was having kids, yep. Um, after Dave and I were married for a couple of years, we were living in Oklahoma. I had my first daughter was born there in Oklahoma. Okay. And then with his job, we were transferred to the Panhandle of Texas in a little wow. bitty oil town and um, I had my second two children there um, I, I hope it's okay to say this but the second child actually was born in our car uh, we oh, didn't wow. make it to the hospital can you believe that oh, so well, I guess it was <laughs> a long way not like in the panhandle there's right not it, a hospital it was like corner. an hour like an hour north of, of Amarillo oh, so it was wow. quite, quite yes. a drive you were in the desert mm -hmm. but it was during that season where um, Dave decided he really wanted to, to work for a nonprofit organization and lead okay. the corporate world and we decided that wow. together as a family family. Um, it was a ministry that we had been part of when we were in college, Ooh. and so we knew the founder and just knew right. that, and we had been part, we'd been supporters of them, and so we actually, with three small children, um, left the corporate world, and I think it's especially because I had moved a lot in the military, yeah. and really, um, there's a lot of insecurity that can come yeah. from that, yeah. that I really valued that um, corporate job, just the security that comes yes. with benefits and insurance and a salary yes. and Dave was a top performer and yeah. Yeah. so it really did require a huge step of faith um, but we did feel like it's what God called us to and so we moved our yeah. little family. All three kids were under the age of five wow. and we moved to Conway, Arkansas and we've been here ever since. That is amazing and what a <laughs> blessing for Conway, Arkansas to get this family to come in and revolutionize the community. Well, I have so much I want to ask you about how the events got started. I'm sure it's a, a long evolution. It's had 25 years in the making. I've been at a number of events for many years. My daughter is part of this story. We'll She's tell amazing. That too. So <laughs> thank you. I think so too. So you don't want to go away more from Rialana Reiner. And we're saying your name right. Yep. You know, it's often said Raylana, but it is Raylana. And you're going to hear more about her. Be right back. A mission field around you is filled with young hearts needing a forever family. And at Second Chance Youth Ranch, our team is committed to providing healthy, stable, loving homes and families to hurting children in the Arkansas foster care system and those up for adoption. Please contact us if you feel the tug at your heart to help foster or adopt and find out the steps you could take to help fulfill a child's lifelong dream. Maybe you can't foster or adopt, but you could help. The need for thousands of children in the system is staggering. But with the help of faithful partners and business alliances, we are meeting those needs right now. Would you help us make a difference? Every gift, regardless of size, impacts a child's life directly and helps provide for a home in the gap right now. Visit the Second Chance Youth Ranch website at 2CYR.org to read more, watch the stories, and to make a contribution for a hurting child's care. Monthly partners are needed, so please contact us right away. And as you partner with this ministry, you are partnering with the Heavenly Father that has promised to be Father to the fatherless. God bless you for helping Second Chance Youth Ranch. Welcome back, and we are talking to Rialana Reiner from Conway, Arkansas, by way of the world. And if you have ever seen in any of the areas that you live in, the great big hot pink banners that declare the Rialana consignment events for children, or if you've ever visited one at the Conway Expo Center, then this 
is the brain and the beauty behind all of what's happening and now all over the nation. So thanks again for being with us today. It's a pleasure, Kathy. So fun. So tell us again, like how this got started. I, I know it began in your garage 25 years ago. And of course, we can see where it is today. Tell us how you got how you got going? Okay, well, I was a young mom. I was in my early 30s. Um, I had three children. Um, they were young, right, and right. as I said, Dave had just made this career move from the corporate world to nonprofit work. A big, and big move. It, it was a big move, and we were honestly really struggling financially, trying to figure out how to make it from one paycheck to the next paycheck. Um, I had this college degree, but exercise science isn't super marketable. <laughs> Um, and so I was trying to figure out, and I really wanted to be home with my kids, you yeah. know, and, and, and really even daycare wouldn't have made sense for us financially because sure. of my earning potential at the time. And so um, I had always loved secondhand, like mm. for myself and my kids. I just love the, the thrill of finding a good deal. And yeah. I also just found that when you, you know, if you could afford the high quality things, they tended to last longer. Yeah. And so I always, always yeah. was looking for good quality brands that then I could resell. There was just, so I always loved Neat. shopping consignment stores and garage right. sales so when my youngest child was heading to preschool I knew I would have three mornings a week that I could just devote to this I had this idea that was just really right. in my heart and mind and it really started out as a ministry um, I just as a mom struggling I knew the struggles of moms yes you know they're just it's just there's just a lot yes. for moms to juggle and yes. so I um, decided I would have this little um, sale in my living room I always had a vision for it to be high quality mm. so we started in my living room um, I had three racks of clothes and my husband helped me move all the furniture out of the living room wow. and I invited I remember I needed people to sell their items to be consigners right and so I had sent a little postcard and I was so excited that 11 of my friends let me sell their clothes oh wow so they brought their things to my house I washed and ironed everything oh. and we've always used our same little string tags um, and so wow. I made everything perfect I hung the little and it was only clothes back in those days and it was called the children's clothing exchange that Neat. was the original name and so I had this little sale in my living room three racks of clothes and the first one was a huge failure um, hardly anybody came. Oh my goodness. And um, my natural personality is actually really introverted. I didn't know anything about marketing. I kind of thought if I made it perfect, people would come. Yeah. Well, the problem was people didn't know about it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so that is an important piece. I had to learn how to be, um, how to market and invite people. And yeah. so I called each consigner and I asked him, can I try it one more time? Mm -hmm. And so we had it again and I um, we ended up also then um, putting things out in the garage to kind of have a garage sale. And right. so that's how it started, was very humble. Um, mm -hmm. And then it was the model was always just to do it twice a year, once in the okay. fall and then once in the spring. Right. And so um, the first sale, I remember I was so excited that I actually made $200 and like, oh, wow. You know, I think I'm and that's a lot of work for oh. $200. <laughs> but it was so exciting to me as uh, someone who had, had no money really of my own. Yes, All of our money went yes. to pay bills, just get through. Yes. It was, I, I remember buying this fancy purse. I'd never bought a fancy oh. purse, I think. And so anyway, the um, I just started doing that each, you know, every six months. And it took over every room in the house. <laughs> and uh, my husband actually developed our IT. And so he loves doing software type things. So yeah, for him, yeah. a lot of guys hunt and fish. Yeah. Well, he likes software. And so That's his day great. job was filled with people. And so he'd want to, in the evenings, a way for him to relax was to do IT things. Isn't that neat? So it was special. So back in the early 90s, we were able to develop this computerized system, which wow. now it's no big deal. But back then, it was a big deal. Well, not really not a big deal. It kind of is a big deal because now you're franchised all over the country and it's sort of a model for, or actually the model for everything, right? It is. We have about 110 wow. franchises um, in about 25 states. And so we've, it's been wow. fun to learn about business, but the heart has really been about serving moms and serving families from the very beginning. That's amazing. You know, you go from your garage in your, in your living room and in 25 years, you're in 25 states with 115? About probably 110. That's more than 100, I mean, that's a hit <laughs> as far as I can see. That's a lot of work, but mm -hmm. obviously you were developing more consigners, and so how did it start to make the leap out of state, then just people coming in for your events in Conway? Well, um, there was a there was a period of about in 2008 when I had the, the events were, were growing. Um, yeah. I had started in Conway, I had yeah. one in Little Rock, and we were just real, they were just growing, and we realized that families 
loved them, appreciated them. We were meeting a need, you know, that yes. everybody's looking for second hand to save money, but they wanted this really great experience. And yes. so that's what we yeah. wanted to provide. And so about that time, Dave decided he wanted to stay in this nonprofit world. Mm -hmm. And so I realized, whew, I gotta figure this out then long-term for our family financially. And so I decided to franchise. And the state of Arkansas quickly filled up. We have about 14 franchises in Arkansas. We wow. sold those very quickly. And yeah. um, then the next step was just kind of naturally out of state. And then we just gradually, you know, our, our our hub is obviously this central part of right. America, and then we've gradually now we're coast to coast. We have one in Hawaii, and oh, so fun. and typically, and we don't really Can advertise. I work that event? <laughs> that would be one I would like. It's it is put my shoes on for that. It's one. actually hard work, um, just because it's yes, I'm you know sure. so one of their events. I went over there to launch one. It was open air, like it's just it's oh so my, different. Right, it's so different. But, but typically, we don't really um, advertise the franchises too much. I mean, typically, people typically find us by attending an event right. and then going, oh, I'd like to serve my community this way. Wow. So now you have employees, you have we do. offices. How many employees? Do you have? Well, we have probably about 11 full-time employees. Our corporate office is in Conway. Wow, um, you but guys then, do a lot for a dozen of oh, you to be doing it all. Oh, oh, well, yes, a lot. I mean, I have, I have an amazing, incredible team that is behind our mission, and I'm thankful um, because it's definitely a labor of love. <laughs> wow, and so in addition now to the um, events themselves, you also have an annual conference we for do. your owners. Yeah, once a, once a year we get together, we invite all of our owners to go to a beautiful location. We try to make it in different places around the country and it's just a time, these are, you know, my primary mission now is, I would say, well, one of my primary missions is to serve these women who have bought a business. You know, 98% right. of them have never owned a business and so now wow. they're in this position of how do I run this business and how can I be successful and so I get to breathe life into them and encourage them and help them mm. and, and our team, of course, in the corporate yes, office. So yes. we come together to try to give them hope and courage and tools to keep fighting the fight because business isn't easy you know wow it's, it's a it's a it's a battle <laughs> it is and you're fighting to succeed and your markets are everywhere so it's probably a different kind of thing to tackle where depending on where you're mm -hmm. franchised but that's amazing what a journey and I love I almost was surprised to hear you say the first one kind of failed mm. that it's really okay to have a good idea and to hold steady Stay the course, fight for it, make the dream come true, comes with a lot of work. An amazing turnaround, and, and I'll have a few more questions to ask for you. So don't go away, we'll be right back after this great video. Hi, my name is Tanya, I'm 16. I love animals, I'm one of the sweetest people in my in my placement i'm very kind my favorite animal is dogs because ever since i was little i love the play with puppies my favorite dog is a german shepherd i want to be a foster mom because because ever since I've been in the facility, it's been making me sad. If I had a million dollars, I would, I would probably go out with my family to Disney World and take them and go to like rides and do things that would like in Disney World. I hope I can get adopted one day with a family that will love me and take me in and have a family that will always be by your side and stays by you forever and will love you no matter what. I would want a mom that would love me and be there for me when something's wrong. And I would want a dad that's so cool that me and him could go and fix cars or something. My one wish is I wish to have a puppy that's a German Shepherd, a little baby puppy 
of this big that's a German Shepherd that I would raise and take really good care of. We always hope that you enjoy those Project Zero videos where you can just get to meet a young person personally or a young child personally to see what the heart cry is of every person in our state's fostering system. Thousands of children that need a forever home, many of them longing for a family to adopt them, many of them have no hope of a family reconciliation, and there's so many things that we can do individually, small contributions to a solvable crisis in our state. I'm talking today to my good friend, Rialana Reiner, whose amazing consigning events are all over the country, all over Arkansas. And if you've been anywhere in the quads of our state, I bet you've seen the, the billboards for the Rialana consigning events. And you guys also have a mission, not only for moms and helping moms, but now even for foster families. Tell us, tell us about that. Yes, well, we have a heart to give back in our communities. And my heart for foster families really began with my brother and my sister-in-law because mm -hmm. I watched them be a foster family mm -hmm. and I really saw firsthand the challenges. Uh, yeah. I mean, of course, not yeah. not not exactly firsthand, but through sure. by watching their family Absolutely. and my heart just began to grow and think through what is a way that our events, we could help in just a small way. Mm -hmm. And so when our events are over, we have some items that are designated for foster families. That's and so it, great. It's so special, Kathy. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I cried the first couple of years as I would watch those families and those yes. kids come in. and. So many of the kids had never had a pair of Nikes or, you know, just things right, of their right. own. And it, it just, it's truly, really special. It is. You know, I've had the privilege, uh, full disclosure, my daughter works for Rialana. She's a marketing director and, mm -hmm. and she began as a shopper. And we have loved these events and loved the deals that we find. But one thing that has touched my heart in working some of the events is working the foster family sale where they can come in and actually get whatever they need. If they have the paperwork for their children, they can just leave with whatever they can carry out. And the stories are amazing. Mm -hmm. I, have, I have witnessed too where foster moms with their bio children and their foster kids are just elated like it's Christmas yes. and they're so thrilled for these jeans or this toy that's brand new or mm -hmm. it, and it's just so heartwarming to see that you've built a community that does give back to a community that really needs a lot of giving back. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of joy in, in being a part of that and I've also seen that grow when we first started shopping the events and now the size of how much um, the foster families can pick from. Mm -hmm. I mean, the last event that I attended in Conway was amazing, like what was available to the foster families. And now you've opened it to military families. We have, this was really special. It was our first time and we offer it to the military families that are um, the rank of E5 and below. And, um, you know, in Conway, we're pretty far from the military bases, so I wasn't really sure how, if the families would drive over or if there right. was a need, but we, we were truly overwhelmed with the response. And yeah. the yeah. families were truly so grateful. You know, they're struggling. Um, and I think just also yeah. growing up in the military, it, it just it, it just blessed my heart as well that we were, yeah. were able to meet a need there. And That's so, a great connection. You know, I just think as, as women, no matter what we do, we, we want to feel like we're giving back and we're helping right. and right. we're contributing making someone else's life easier or better, yeah. you know, don't you think? And that's really the mission of your company. Mm -hmm. You're really a serve-oriented kind of a, we sure are. a caregiver. We Care are. Caregiving <laughs> kind of a community caregiver. I love that. But the volume that you have done that through these events, I just want to say thank you also oh. because it's it's been very heartwarming to see. I remember one time I was coming and it was getting close to the foster family sale mm -hmm. and a woman got in line with me. She had she was a foster parent and she had a child with, with her and she said, um, I just got this little one last night. Like she got the child in the mm -hmm. middle of the night, which is frequently what happens. They don't have anywhere else to go. They've got to be placed immediately or they're going to be on a couch somewhere in DHS or somewhere until there's a home. Mm -hmm. So she said, I just got this little one and all she has 
or the clothes that she's wearing mm -hmm. and I've just got to come in here and get a few things. So I was able to tell her about oh. well, keep your paperwork and come back on you know such and such a day and time and you're going to be able to get what you need. But this was a foster family that was coming for an immediate need during a sale. Mm -hmm. So good timing on that. That's mm -hmm. Well, and we just kept hearing stories after story of how the kids just come with nothing. Right. And so, um, you know, you just you just think about the children, you think about the families, but you p think about those precious children, right. I think, even right. more. Like they, you know, they they deserve deserve better than that. Yeah. You know, yeah. so if we can help them with a fun little toy or s their own coat that they can feel proud of or a, their own backpack to take to school Absolutely. or whatever it is, you just, Absolutely. warms your heart. Yeah. I know one thing, there, there was a sale that you had lots of, um, bicycle helmets okay new in the box i mean like a <laughs> yep. whole like shelf the whole shelf stacked three deep of of these bicycle helmets and i remember texting a picture to rachel hubbard the daily operations director for second chance youth ranch and she said oh yeah we go through a lot of bicycle helmets so you know i bought bicycle helmets and it. gave it to the ranch there's just a thousand things like that that many of us could do mm. partnering with a great company like yours that has a network of consigners and families that are participating and giving back to the communities and, you know that's kind of the focus of this program is what can we do in our communities um, pastor perry black has often said if there are four or five thousand children in the foster care system in Arkansas. How solvable is that? Well, there's more than 7,000 churches mm. in the state. Mm -hmm. If every church just took one child and mm. focused on one child, then boom, crisis over. Everyone's got a home and everyone has a community around them. And so maybe that's something you as a viewer can figure out too. Like, do you have any foster families in your church? Who can you surround? Who can you buy for? Who can you give some gift cards to? How can you help? Maybe it's the call. Maybe it's Second Chance Youth Ranch. Maybe it's getting involved in, in the Rialana events. Lots of ways to pour back in to take some of the sting out for children who find themselves in some pretty devastating situations. So Rialana, thank you for your love for people, mm -hmm. your love for families and moms and developing moms into business women. That's mm -hmm. amazing too. Any, any parting thoughts? Well, close? I would just say encourage everyone to find their their way that they can give back, especially with foster to foster children and foster families. Yeah. And um, yeah, we just consider it an honor to to be able to help in a small way some, for some kiddos that are just have a lot of hurt in their life. Yeah. And so yeah. I love the vision that you all have, and thank you for having me. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you for that. Thanks for joining us. Stick around for another edition of Second Chance Youth Ranch TV. Go to the website, look for Rialana events, their website, uh, name will be mysteriously appearing on the bottom of the screen, <laughs> and find them on social media. Lots of ways for you to find an event near you, so make yourself available to that. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on 2CYR TV.